My name is Dr. Jonathan Salick. I'm a cardiologist in Boston, Massachusetts that specializes in recurrent pericarditis. I think it's always important to talk to patients about what the pericardium is and how it can get damaged or diseased. The pericardium is a fibrous sac around the heart that the heart sits in, and the sac provides protection and lubrication for the heart. Like anything else in the body, it can get diseased, and the most common disease that affects the pericardium is called pericarditis, itis meaning inflammation. A first episode of pericarditis, in most cases, is what is called idiopathic, or we don't know what causes it, typically a virus that you may or may not know that you have but other causes are also possible. Recurrent pericarditis is a syndrome characterized by chronic chest pain. They have a symptom-free interval, usually of at least four to six weeks, where they are feeling well and feeling back to normal, and then symptoms recur, even in the absence of a new trigger. That initial injury episode leads to an ongoing cycle of inflammation called auto-inflammation that sets itself up in the pericardium and starts to recur in a cyclical fashion. Every year, about 20,000 people in the United States are diagnosed with recurrent pericarditis. So while it is not a common disease, it is actually a lot more common than we think, and the number is probably growing. Research shows that the average patient with recurrent pericarditis might experience symptoms for three to four years. However, we know that there is a large variability in how long patients might experience symptoms, and up to a quarter of patients might experience symptoms for eight years or longer. The most common symptom of pericarditis, whether it's an initial episode or recurrent episodes, is chest pain. But it's not just any chest pain. The classic chest pain of pericarditis is chest pain that gets worse when you lay down, that's better when you sit up or lean forward, that's worse when you take a big breath in, and that is often worse with exertion. And one of the main problems that we see with recurrent pericarditis is that patients are in such ongoing chronic chest pain that they have a markedly reduced level of exercise and activity. And so aside from just having chest pain, patients with recurrent pericarditis might report lower levels of energy, lower ability to exercise, and a lot of ongoing anxiety and stress because they are quite concerned about developing the next flare or the next acute episode of pericarditis. What I think patients may not initially understand is that recurrent pericarditis affects all aspects of your life. It's not just a chest pain syndrome. If you're having ongoing recurring chest pain due to ongoing recurring inflammation, you might experience a number of other effects that markedly reduce your ability to do the things that you love to do. So when I see patients with recurrent pericarditis, what they tell me in no unclear terms is that their life has been completely disrupted. Prior to their diagnosis, they were a healthy person. They were able to exercise, they were able to work, they were able to enjoy time with their family, they were able to live a worry-free life. Once they develop recurrent pericarditis, patients experience high levels of fatigue and anxiety about the next episode. If you're always worried that the next episode is around the corner, it's very hard to live a worry-free life. It's very hard to live a life where you feel like you can go to the gym, you can do things that you'd like to do, you can travel, you can spend time with your family and not worry about chest pain. So I tell patients, I understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling. It's because of your underlying disease process. And I want to work with you to make the diagnosis and to eventually find a treatment plan that works for you. The first barrier to diagnosis of recurrent pericarditis is awareness. And that's true on both the physician's side and the patient's side. Many physicians might not understand that up to 30% of patients with an acute or first episode of pericarditis develops recurrent pericarditis. I think a lot of doctors might also not understand that the pathophysiology or underlying reason for recurrent pericarditis is different from the single or first episode that you might have had. The patient's history is critical in making the proper diagnosis. Research shows that a patient with recurrent pericarditis receives on average of three other incorrect diagnoses before arriving at the proper diagnosis because it is often very difficult to diagnose the cause of ongoing chronic chest pain. Many things can cause chronic chest pain, including acid reflux, other cardiac conditions, things involving your lungs, your chest wall.
it's very important to advocate for the proper diagnosis. If you are a patient who has had a first episode of pericarditis and you find that you have now developed recurrent symptoms that seem similar to your initial episode, especially after a symptom-free interval where you felt better, it is really important that you speak to your physician about the possibility of recurrent pericarditis. There are centers of expertise across the country that specialize in pericardial disease, including recurrent pericarditis. And it's important to research those options to see if you might be able to be seen at a center that has more knowledge and expertise about this condition. It's important to arm yourself with knowledge. There are lots of great websites like lifedisrupted.com that include a lot of great information that you can then bring to your physician to start a discussion about whether RP may be a diagnosis that you're suffering from and how to best make that diagnosis. I think it's important to understand that recurrent pericarditis, while rare, is not uncommon and that there are treatments that we can provide patients to make them feel better. Working with your physician, you can create a plan to treat recurrent pericarditis that's right for you. Thank you.